going back to algebra one. This is our final lesson or the final thing that we are going to learn uh, this school year. Uh, your next packet will just have a final review and um, the final in it. So solving quadratic equations by the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is this negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Looks kind of complicated, but it's basically just a substitution method. You want to put all of your equations in the quadratic form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c, and a, b, and c are just numbers, okay? But this is your x squared term, your x term, and your number term, okay? Once you do that, you identify your a, b, and c, and then you plug those in here and solve. Uh, the first part of this lesson, like 1 through 13, they just want you to identify A, B, and C, which I did not do any examples of that, but I will identify them in, the, in these questions so that you can see what they are. So, um, we look right here. We want to make sure that our x squared, our x, and our number are all on the same side and the other side is zero. We have that, okay? So if I list my a, b, and c, what's in front of x squared? It's a one, so a is one. What's in front of x is negative three, so that's what b is, and c is negative 28. It's the number on the end, and they all have to have their signs in it. Once we do that, we're going to use this formula and put in our a, b, and c and solve this, okay? So we have x equals negative b. Well, b is already negative. It's negative 3. So we go negative times whatever b is, negative 3, plus or minus, and this would be b squared. So that's a negative 3 squared. This is always a minus right here and the 4 is always there, it's a constant. And then a is 1, c is negative 28, all over 2 times whatever a is, okay? It's kind of jumbled up, but uh, substitution method I like because it's just about the math, okay? All you need to do is perform the calculations. Uh, so when we do this, we're going to go slowly so that I can show you. Um, x equals a negative times a negative makes this a positive 3. Okay, we are not going to take it out of the root yet. we got to figure this out. Negative 3 times negative 3 is a 9. All right, and when I'm multiplying this last bit, I'm going to pay attention to the signs. I have a negative here and a negative there. If I have even numbered negatives, this is going to be positive, okay? If I had odd number 3 or 1 negative, then that's going to stay negative. Then I have 4 times 1, which is 4, and then 4 times 28. So 4 times 28 is 112. And then that's all over 2 times 1, which is 2. Now it's getting a little bit more workable. So I need to work this radical out order of operations. So 9 plus 112, I believe, is 121. And then the square root of 121 is 11. So this would be 3 plus or minus 11 over 2. Now I need to work both of those problems out. I need to do 3 plus 11, which is 14, and then divided by 2, which would be 7. So if I went 3 plus 11 over 2 is 14 over 2, which is 7. So that's one answer. Um, and then I need to do it with the minus. 3 minus 11 over 2. 3 minus 11 I think is negative 8. So negative 8 over 2 would be negative 4. So x equals 7 and negative 4. Okay? It's, it's a long process but it's just math. 
which means there's plenty of rooms for mistakes in here, so go slow and write it all out. All right, I'm gonna move this and I'm gonna work 18 out to show you that sometimes these don't come out as regular numbers. Sometimes things stay in radicals and that's perfectly okay. Um, so let me get this off the board and then we'll use the board to work 18. It's going to be kind of smudgy. I didn't want to get it too wet because it's hard and dry. All right. So here's my problem 18. And I have my x squared, my x, and my number all on the same side with a zero. So I'm going to write out my a, b's, and c's, which is what your first part of your lesson is is just to write those out on like the first 13, 12, 13 problems. What's in front of x squared? It's a positive two, that's what a is. What's in front of x? It's a negative two, that's what b is. What is the number by itself? It's a negative five, okay? Those are critical, you have to have the numbers or else you can't fill in this. So now I'm gonna plug those into this formula and then slowly solve it. So x equals negative b. Okay, b is negative 2, but that negative is in the problem. That's why there's, this is a negative, and then there's a negative in the problem. Plus or minus b squared, which would be negative 2 squared. You're going to have to move over number 18. Minus 4 times a, which is 2, and c, which is negative 5, okay? All over 2 times whatever a is, which is 2, okay? Then we're going to slowly condense this down. A negative times a negative makes a positive 2. I wrote the positive. There's no need for that. I wrote it just because. Okay, negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. When I look at this, I have a negative and a negative, so this is going to be positive. 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 5 is 40. And then 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, so now we need to condense that down. All right, it's going to be 2 plus or minus radical 40, 4 over 4, okay? But this needs to be simplified. No, there's not a square root of 44, but that radical can be, radical can be broken down, uh, which is why we spent so much time on this radical. I could break this radical down to 4 times 11 because there is a square root of 4, okay? If I did that, let me write the problem out. The 4 comes to the outside, the square root of 4, which is 2, and that goes right there, and 11 would be left up here. Okay, make sure when you take, if you reduce reducing your radicals and you come out, it comes out here, not out here to that one, okay? But if there was a number out here, it gets multiplied. Then we simplify, okay? These things can be divided out. They basically, since this number's smaller, it's going to be a fraction, but... 2 goes into itself one time, 2 goes into 4 two times, and 2 goes into itself one time. You don't have to write the 1 out there. It could just be written like that, but if you do put a 1 out there, it's not wrong. And this is the answer. We can't break that down into a number. Well, we could, but it'd be a decimal. Um, so we just leave it like that. All right, I'm going to show you one more. I'm going to clear this off. Show you one more for good measure, then you're on your own. Practice, practice, practice. And I'm not going to make this super clean or pretty, I just want to get it done. Right, if the board's wet, so.
Alright. So let's see. One more. Let's look at uh we'll look at twenty-six. Twenty-six is x squared minus six equals x. So I picked this one because it's not in order. Uh, the x is not where it needs to be. Everything needs to be on one side. Uh, so it's a positive x, so I need to subtract x. That would give me x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. It has to be the squared term, then the x, then the number. They cannot be out of order. Okay. Then I have to find my a, b, and c. That is a 1. That is a negative 1. And that is a negative 6. Okay? Key points. You have to have those. Then we're going to plug them in and solve. This would be negative and then whatever b is, which is negative 1. Well, you got to put the 1 in there, not just the parenthesis. Negative 1. Okay? Plus or minus b squared, which would be negative 1 squared minus that 4 is always there that negative 4 always there it's in the formula a is 1 and c is negative 6 all over 2 times whatever a is which is 1 okay then we slowly condense that down x equals negative times a negative that is a positive 1 Negative times a negative makes a positive one there. Negative and a negative, this is going to be a positive. 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 times 6 is 24. And 2 times 1 is 2. So this really will look like 1 plus or minus square root of 25, 1 plus 24, uh, over 2. And the square root of 25 is 5. So this would be 1 plus or minus 5 over 2. So you're not done there. You have to solve 1 plus 5 divided by 2 and 1 minus 5 divided by 2. So I'll write those down here. 1 plus 5 divided by 2 and 1 minus 5 divided by 2. That's what those symbols are saying there. 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 over 2 equals 3. That's one answer. Okay, 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. That's the other answer. So x equals 3 and negative 2. All right, so uh, it is a um, tedious, I guess, long has a little bit to it, but uh, the math of it is not that difficult. Have a good rest of your day. God bless.